Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We are Painting in France and we run painting holidays here in the south of France. But in 2024, we'll also be in Tuscany, the Costa Brava and Morocco. And over the next few weeks, I'd like to be showing you these locations through a painting tutorial. Today, we're going to be starting with our painting in France. This is one of the uh, typical locations we'll be painting in both June and September. So let's get started. Right, the initial sketch with the 2B pencil. I do like to put a straight line in for my horizons, especially where there's water involved. Um, after that, take a look at the photograph and slowly sketch the main shapes in. I tend to kind of put the first buildings in relatively accurately and then kind of freestyle the rest in. Main shapes first, don't worry about the details at this point. He said, adding some windows. Once you've got the main shapes in, the beach and so on and so forth, you can perhaps hint where the trees might be and then you're ready to start painting. At this stage, this is really enough detail. So I tend to do my skies first. In this case, I've used a little bit of cerulean blue. The paper is damp, but I think that was a mistake. Interestingly enough, I normally work at an angle and this is flat to my desk, which causes a little bit of a problem. Normally, the, I kind of flood the sky on and it flows down the page. As I come down, I add a little bit of water to the mix and just kind of get it to fade sweetly. What I've done here is add a little bit of um, I think it's a cobalt blue just to intensify that color a little bit. Once I've got the rough shapes in, what I tend to do is with a clean dry brush just wipe away some clouds as you can see I'm doing here. The important thing is to wipe the brush after each stroke otherwise you start spreading color around which gets messy. Once that's dry, you can get on with some flooding some colour onto the facades. Uh, this is a little bit strong actually, I may tend to water that up down. I've started with Naples yellow and then add some, looks like a bit of a yellow ochre with a touch of sienna. At this stage, because it's still uh, quite, quite damp, you can add colours as you come down the facades and you get a nice kind of textural finish. You know, you can keep it quite, quite light at this stage. You can paint over the trees and because they're going to be much stronger later on. So I've now mixed up a slightly more intense colour for the, the water, the sea. Um, and I'm just kind of carefully washing that in. I like to keep the lines kind of running horizontal just to kind of emphasize that this is a, a watery surface. It's a little bit of experimentation here. Um, while it's still damp, you can add richer colors, push that back in, a little bit of dry brush work uh, or damp brush damp clean brush to wipe away some, some highlights. I think there's a touch of pathalo blue in here, but I've also got a kind of turquoise mix too. And wiped away some reflections with a flat brush. And once that's dry, you can start adding some more details into the, the buildings. Mm 
This looks like a little bit of burnt sienna I'm adding on here. Quite, quite random. Burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Just on some of the facades, under the roofs. Slowly building it up, but leaving some lighter areas too. Okay, well now I'm just going to put some of the windows in, but you really need to let those facades dry properly before you start adding the details. So yeah, now you can see I've actually gone and um, putting some darker tones in on the rocks in the foreground. I'll let that dry and then come back with a bit more detail later on. People often have trouble drawing rocks, but I tend to just use sort of lighter tones first, leave some white spaces as well. And then once it's dry, you can come back in with a darker tone to give it some uh, depth. Now it's time for some shadows. Take a deep breath, mix a Payne's gray and magenta, and then studying the picture, just kind of boldly um, wipe that in. There's lots of uh, canopies and, and balconies it's a sunny day, so you can see the, the shadows are quite strong. It looks strong, colour, strong colour, but I think you'll be surprised it does fade um, as it dries. You can see it's beginning to take shape now. Shadows under the roofs, under the balconies. Some of the uh, facades are in shade. It all helps just to give it a bit of three dimension. And now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go back into the rocks, just putting some strong shadows in here and there. Sometimes it's helped to, to redraw the rocks so you can see which ones are which, especially in the foreground. As you move away into the picture, it's not quite so vital. Kind of looking beyond the trees and putting some shadows in underneath where they will be. A couple of uh, more windows and so on. They'll be painted over by the trees. Okay, once the background's dried, you can come in with a, I've got a kind of really quite a fresh lime green for the uh, initial wash. And I'll come back in with some darker hooker's green for that sort of strong shadow underneath. Now some trees behind those roofs, a bit of negative painting just to make those buildings jump out. in the foreground. And now kind of while it's still damp, not completely wet, paint that deep hooker's green, plus with a bit of blue mixed in there just to give it an intense shadow. Beginning to take shape. There's trees in the background as well, and then the hedge. Just be kind of in, be aware of where your sunlight is coming from. In this case, it's coming in from the right hand side. So I generally make, try and add a bit of shadow on the left hand side, just to give that kind of depth and shape to the trees. Here, for example, and get some nice strong colour underneath the, the hedge. Yeah, 
Here I've rinsed out the, the brush and I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit of paint away from the, from the greenery just to kind of give it a bit of extra lightness. Often using a bit of tissue paper, clean brush, rinse it out and away you go. Good tip as well is to, if you've got a kind of fine brush, every now and again just roll it to a point on a scrap piece of paper, it just keeps it sharper. And I'll often have a scrap piece of paper just to, to try the colours out if in doubt before you put it straight onto the uh, your page. Now the background and shadows are dry, I'm putting in some details. Yeah, the windows and uh, the balcony shadows again. Just once again increasing the the tone in the picture. Just needs a little flick here and there just to suggest windows, gives everything a bit of scale. Okay, and then once again a sort of a mix of Payne's grey and magenta and I'm just flicking in a little into some sort of furniture in here, some, some traffic light, uh, some street lights, just a little flick into the lights. Fine brushwork, just a hint that there's um, a little bit of something going on in the distance. Great for aerials and, and uh, rooftop chimneys and so on. I think it's little details like these that just finish a picture well. And why not, let's have a splash of red for the boat. Always good to get a little bit of red in the picture. Okay, once my sea area had dried, I thought, you know what, it needs strengthening a little bit. So whether this was the right decision or not, I decided to add a deeper wash of colour, a little bit of cobalt blue, a bit of pathalo blue mixed in, a little bit of that turquoise colour. And kind of keeping that sort of horizontal movement just to kind of emphasise the to see the surface of this water. Right, so now the little bit of white gouache. I've got a kind of fine brush and a nice thick creamy uh, white gouache. And that's just perfect for adding little details, some sparkle in the water, a um, little hint of highlights and some more aerials. It just, for me, just has a little bit of sparkle. And then I'll often put a, just a few horizontal stripes of white into the water, whether, whether it's a lake or a river, and it just kind of breaks it up and inserts some sort of sparkles going on. Quite good for uh, you know, retouching windows, little window surrounds. It's a very pretty village. This is uh, Buzig, and I've actually used it. If you can see in the top corner, that's I used it for my um, business card. It's a lovely uh, place right on the. Mediterranean Lagoon. In the distance, you can see that hill, which is actually set, and beyond there is the the open Mediterranean. Now, but this is a wonderful place for trying seafood with a little glass of local white wine, Picpoul de Penne.
Okay, now what I tend to do as well is sometimes just add some rough pencil work, but rather than pencil, I use a black crayon. It's actually a black watercolor crayon, and it's just nice, just to kind of hint at a bit more detail in the foreground, perhaps maybe some pebbles on the beach. And you don't have to go around everything, but it just, for me, just kind of ties things together and gives the illusion of a of a, of a quick sketch when you've added some colour. Also good for putting in uh, railings and uh, balconies and so on. touches, a few more little sparkly white bits here and there. The white needs to be quite thick in order to um, stay white. If you have it too watery, the colour beneath will, will shine through. Okay, that's not far from the end now. I think all we need is a few more little details in a signature. Great, well here's the finished painting and if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and who knows we might see you next summer, June and September. Uh, let's hope so. Bye for now.